I'm, I'm Steve Ison, Council of the City of Casey, also the newly elected chairman of the Republican Party here in Lexington County. As many of you know, Lexington County is the most influential county in the state, the most Republican county in the state, and if I have anything to do with it, it's going to be even more powerful and more people involved over the next several months. So, if you want freedom, individual freedom, and the most discriminating group in this country is not black or white or any color. It's the individual. We're losing freedoms every day because of government intrusion. Conservatism, conservatism, conservatism is the Republican Party label. That's what it's about, the Constitution. So I would like to uh, introduce a very conservative candidate, one of the Republican candidates, someone I'm very happy and pleased to know and respect her very much, Katrina Sheely. I'm going to ask some of my other family members to come on up around here because I know you're out there. So. <laughs> Why don't you come stand up close so when I talk about you, I, you'll, you'll be over here close. Where's Tom Rover? Yeah. I don't want to stand here. <laughs> you don't have to look at Well, good afternoon. Gosh, what a great crowd. I want to thank everybody for coming out here to join me um, for this special announcement and to be here with me and my family. In 2008, we came very close to replacing Senator Knotts. But this election was stolen from us when a bunch of Democrats came out and voted in the runoff and took it away from us. Um, I knew in my heart that day that we were going to come back in four years and we were going to win this race because we were going to work very hard and, and which we've been doing. We've been doing that over the last couple, well, we, I've been working for probably two years now, but uh, we've been working really hard for the last couple months. But tonight, I'm officially announcing my candidacy for the uh, Republican primary for Senate District 23. And we're also here for another reason. We're here to celebrate the grand opening of our office. And um, Ted McGee and uh, Teddy, they had to leave. But I want to thank the McGee family for donating this great space. And y'all got to admit, now I didn't have a campaign office before, but this is a great location and a great space, and it's going to be wonderful things going to happen because of this office. And so let's give them a hand. Thank you. And because of this office, it's going to help us bring dignity back to District 23, and that's something we need, it's something we haven't had for a long time. my husband Jimmy and my daughter Erica and, and one of my grandsons my, the other one's playing baseball and my with my and my son-in-law's with them my sister Cheryl and my brother Eddie is somewhere now I know I can't miss that he bald head where is he? he he went outside oh, my, brother, my, brother, my brother has left the building but uh, he must be outside somewhere and my cousin Ronnie who's been out putting out uh, signs for me he's over there and I'm sure I'm probably missing some of my family members, but then I've got so many great friends out here that have been working so hard, and I want to thank y'all for joining in the, the cause to help us meet this goal, because it, it's a goal that we're going to meet this time. I feel it. Y'all heard um, Jim Reed up here, and, and we all feel it. I mean, I feel it. I hope y'all feel it, too. And we feel it. <laughs> that I'm committed to my faith and my family and my community. My husband and I were both, well, my sister too, we're all members of St. James Lutheran Church out in Red Bank. My husband and I are on a lot of committees out there, and believe it or not, we both sing in the choir. We're not going to sing for you tonight. <laughs> we're not that good, but um, along with my commitment to God and family, I bring a lifelong history of hard work that I'm going to take with me to the Senate. My first job was working for my dad bagging groceries at the Piggly Wiggly when I was 13 years old. And, uh, but I quickly advanced to cashier. <laughs> um, then I went to work, my first insurance job I went to work when I was a junior in high school part-time 
also working for my father. He was a great entrepreneur, might I add. And uh, that's when I got my uh, start in the insurance industry. And I had one other insurance job before I went to work for Davis Garvin Insurance Agency, which is where I work now. And I've been there for almost 30 years. And uh, I've worked hard all my life, and I plan to take that work ethic, my private business management experience, and my knowledge of free market principles to the South Carolina Senate with me. Also, as a wife of a small business owner, my husband owns Sheely and Sons Electric, I also understand the problems business owners face every day in this poor economy. I know firsthand how the cost of health care, workers' compensation, and government regulations can threaten to drive a 55-year business owner out of work. Their company's been in business for 55 years, and let me tell you, these past two years, it's been tough. As a senator, I will fight for small business owners to have fewer regulations and fewer government mandates so they can afford to keep people employed. In addition to my strong work ethic, I will bring my commitment to supporting my community to the State House. I have served my community for many years. I'm currently the chairman of the board for the South Carolina Friends of Juvenile Justice. I'm also a founding board member for Women of Hope, which is a newly formed organization with Lexington Medical Foundation that reaches out to patients in need and to the community. I'm a former board member of the Lexington County Department of Social Services and the Girl Scouts of the Congaree. Just recently, while serving on a committee with the Department of Juvenile Justice Director Margaret Barber and Habitat for Humanity Director Roy Kramer, I helped lead the effort to build a house that was Okay, that's $25. It will show on the ethics report, too. Okay. That's all right. I helped lead the effort to build the house that was recently lifted over the fence. I don't know how many of you saw that report, but uh, the children at the Department of Juvenile Justice actually got to build a house with um, Habitat for Humanity. And we took a crane and we lifted it over the fence. And that's a project that's very dear, near and dear to my heart because I believe that we need to help young people and make them better of, become productive citizens. And, and that's something we can do even if they're behind bars. We need to give them something to look forward to and give back to society. I've also contributed a good portion of my life to the conservative cause. I co-chaired the GOP victory efforts in 2004 and 2006, and I've raised tens of thousands of dollars for the Lexington County Republican Party. In 2007, I served as the Lexington County Republican Party chairman, and prior to that, I served as a treasurer for two years. The last Lexington County, um, in the last Lexington County GOP convention, I was the highest, I was the delegate who received the highest number of votes, which was more than any other, any other delegate, which included legislators and a U.S. congressman. Just to be honest. Republican National Convention and was an alternate delegate for the 2008 Republican National Convention. I'm a charter member of the West Metro Republican Women that I helped found in 2001, and I served as the president of that organization from 2008 to 2010. I've also been a delegate to both the state and national federation of Republican women's conventions. I've attended many Tea Party events, and I've been a strong supporter of the Tea Party movement since its inception a few years ago. And for those of you who don't know, and there's a lot of Tea Party uh, movement people out here, but for those of you who don't know, Tea Party stands for taxed enough already. Nice. I think Tea Party groups and other patriot organizations for regaining the conservative citizen's voice and the election of sincere conservatives at every level of government. And that's just a small sampling of my background, which qualifies me to enter this race. Now I want you to hear about my plans for what I'm going to do when I'm elected senator. I will be a leader on key issues that create a pro-growth economy for South Carolina. My reforms will lead to more jobs, especially higher paying jobs. 
The reforms I am adopting as my platform are modeled after a study by renowned economists. So there isn't a lack of knowledge, there's just a lack of will to get it done once they get over there. There's too many other right. things going on. I mean, we're voting on um, vegetables and, <laughs> and naming, <laughs> naming roads and, and vests and things like that, but we're not, and, and just holding up legislation. I will lead the effort, effort to implement fundamental reforms to free the marketplace and unleash capitalism. I have the will, and I am determined to fight for the reforms that will bring economic prosperity to our state. So let's begin with tax reform. I will lead the effort to simplify the tax system and develop a tax structure that doesn't pick winners and losers. We will save money for businesses and taxpayers by streamlining the tax system and make it simple to understand. When everyone can easily understand the system, it will be harder for politicians and special interests to hide favors for friends. This will result in leveling the playing field and providing transparency for businesses and individuals who pay for government. I plan to eliminate all state taxes and replace them with one simple state sales tax. We will do away with all state all state taxes, including income tax, property tax, and fees, and replace this revenue with an equitable sales tax. When the sales tax is the only source for government revenue, taxpayers will save a substantial amount of money. Furthermore, converting to a single source of government revenue will remove the burden and expense from businesses for being the tax collector. I will also lead the fight to reduce industrial property taxes. South Carolina has the highest industrial property tax in the nation. The state tax on industry is 3.75%, while neighboring states North Carolina and Georgia have rates of 0.98% and 1.52% respectively. It's no wonder we see industrial parks around here sitting empty and we have one of the nation's worst unemployment rates. Another important part of unleashing capitalism is regulatory reform. I will lead the effort to eliminate wasteful and inefficient regulations to create a market-friendly regulatory system. The regulatory environment in South Carolina needs to be revised and simplified. Regulatory reform should have the goal of fostering more entrepreneurship, attracting businesses from other states, and reducing government intervention in the marketplace. Bold reforms will create more and higher paying jobs and an improved standard of living for South Carolinians. The regulatory system should treat pe people equally under the law, using a simple cost-benefit evaluation to bring much needed transparency and accountability to the system. It will then work for everyone and not pick winners and losers. The other fundamental component to ushering in prosperity for South Carolina citizens is education reform. We can no longer allow so-called conservatives in the General Assembly to hold up the proven effective model of providing competition with school choice. School choice is about freeing up parents to be consumer, to being the consumer and freeing up schools to be the innovate, to being innovative. Providing more choice and competition in education will give us a better product for a better price. In addition to providing school, more school choice, we must create an environment for innovation and flexibility in public schools by removing government restrictions on public school funding. We need to eliminate the current funding structure so that schools and teachers can respond directly to the needs of their students, not some cookie cutter scheme designed in the dusty halls of the state house. Another way to improve public education is to maximize education funding by distributing funds directly to schools to get the most for every education dollar. We must remove the bureaucracy that sucks the life out of education funding before it reaches the classroom. We can increase our school funding resources by simply spending our existing funding in a more focused fashion. An overall, an overhaul directing us to responsible spending can easily guarantee schools the money they need without taxing citizens further. I know that the economic issues that plague our state and nation are critical, and these issues need ur urgent attention of the South Carolina General Assembly, and they're not getting them right now. 
However, I remain committed to the social issues of the conservative platform. I understand the responsibility of government to protect our God-given rights. I am pro-Second Amendment, and I understand the responsibility of government to protect the right to bear arms, a fundamental freedom. You can count on me to always protect and defend our right to bear arms. I am 100% pro-life, and I will always fight to protect the right to life from conception through natural death. I believe that all human life, born and unborn, has essential value. I am pro-family because I understand that the traditional American family is the basic fundamental unit of our society, and I will promote governmental actions that strengthen the family to help foster a more stable society, and I will always defend the traditional marriage between one man and one woman. I'm, I'm Katrina Sheely, and I am a principal leader who wants to be held accountable. And I'm running for the South Carolina Senate in District 23. This election is going to be held on June the 12th, and I need your support. All right.